Hi, my name's Ray, and I'm a aspiring bagpiper. I um, was going through my junk, and I found a whole bunch of my old practice chanters, and out of all of them, I found my very first practice chanter, which is this one. And it's from Hakam Din. Uh, I think it's from Hakam Din, and you can see where I've worn off the finish on all the all the finger holes let's see bring that up there I used to carry this thing around with me everywhere I went right when I right from when I first started when I first started I was smoking two packs of cigarettes a day and I could barely blow the scale sorry about the picture my camera's cheap and I can't get the full thing in there that's my giraffe spots but anyway I picked this up and everybody used to comment at how, on how pit, pit high pitched it was and said it was an Irish chanter I don't think anything about that but still sounds pretty good but anyway I kinda turned into a bagpipe practice chanter hoarder so I thought I would show off the different ones I've got this one's different in some sense it's got a cup instead of a chalice on it and let's see right there you can see these I got a bunch of different ones I'll probably try to show you guys a little bit of the different ones this one's pretty got got a pretty good scale I got used to playing this all the time I used to practice probably three or four hours a day every day when I first started and I didn't have an instructor I just had a book but I knew I wanted to play the bagpipes so anyway this is what this one sounds like I think it sounds pretty good. It's a little high pitched, you can't play along with anybody else. That's my very first one, Hakam Dim. It's a good chanter. I like that one. I might have to start playing that a little bit more. There's another one. I have no clue when I got this one. But if you see, it's got a chalice type uh, top and this top is a little bit different than the rest of the chanter this one actually cracked it belongs to a different practice chanter and the holes on this one are pretty big so it puts out pretty good volume <laughs> kind of muffled. Let's see if it sounds different on the desk. I think this one was one of those hard ones to read up. Nothing terribly spectacular, but it's good for playing when all the other chanters are wet. Here's another chalice one. The holes are fairly small on this. Some of these chanters I've only played a couple times. This one apparently I used to play a lot. You can see the finish is worn off on the thumb hole. IG. This one's got kind of a quacky tone to it.
seems a little bit rattly. Looks like say one of the Pakistani reeds. These red ones aren't as consistent as I like. Usually I have to go through a whole bunch of them before I find one that plays. <laughs> This one's different. You can see the difference. The bottom is blended in, and the foot, or the sole, if you want to call it that, is completely different than from all the other ones. And it's got a cup top. And I remember this one's got kind of a knot right here. Oh, you can't, my camera's not good enough. Let's see it go the right way. It's got kind of a knot here. When it gets wet, it starts bleeding moisture out of there. This one's got pretty big finger holes in it. It's kind of ugly and plain, but who cares? to muffle itself. That's okay. It's pretty generic sounding practice channel. I think I only paid like five bucks for it on eBay. I think I just got this one just because the wood was so pretty. Look at that. That piece of wood would have made a beautiful rifle stock. It's got the chalice top on it. Standardized. What's interesting about all these Pakistani chanters is all the tops will interchange. So you can switch them out if one cracks or splits or anything like that. <laughs> It sounds a little bit muffled. I still like the wood on it. That one's pretty cool. Let's see. This one's interesting. It is super light. It feels like it's made out of pine or something like that. In the ferrules, I don't know how you want to pronounce it, a ferrule for rule, whatever, they're made out of polished aluminum, and the bottom's slightly different, and the finger holes are big, and the sole is made out of cast aluminum, and it's been polished, and it's got a little pit in it from the casting bubble or some kind of impurity, but this is the lightest channer I've got, and uh... I like this one. High A is sharp.
sharp. Beeswax can fix that. <clears throat> I think I got this one for even cheaper. I don't know how much I got it for. It was pretty cool. Unique. This one I've hardly played at all. I don't even remember how I got it or when I got it. Or why I got it. It's pretty generic. Chalice type pop. Like that. And the typical carved sole. Reads a little rattly. Hmm. Maybe that's why I didn't play it. Really fussy with the finger placing. that's giving you trouble. If it's too stiff, squish it. Like that, bend it back and forth, relax it. Or, squeeze it on the sides. You can't see it very well. Like that, and that will open it up. It also lowers the pitch, so gotta be careful with that. enough you can practice in the morning not wake up the whole house <coughs> now this chanter I don't know where it's from I paid nine dollars for it and you can see the holes on the finger holes are really small on it and it is made out of ebony this is the only ebony practice chanter I have ever seen or heard of and I have played this one so much that the holes the finger holes let's see right there are starting to get rounded off and that's just from playing it so much because this thing well, let's see if I can get back in the light oh it's so black it's the plainest chanter I got but, oh my goodness, I just love this chair. part is ebony. The top is off of some channel I picked up off a, a goose for I picked up for like 12 bucks on eBay. 
and it's made out of probably pine or something like that. It's really soft. It's never cracked or gotten anything like that. But it matches the rest of the channer and the plainness of the channer. So I like that one. That one's one of my favorite channers. I hope it never wears out. <coughs> Now this one is a is from Bagpipes Galore. It's not a endorsement or anything like that, and this isn't the reeds that type of reed that normally comes with this chanter. And it's made out of plastic. It's cast. It's a, a casting, and it's been drilled. And yeah, that's my top's a little bit loose. I can't decide if I like it. It plays good with the goose. It's really high pitched. Sounds nice. It's a nice sweet. Irish sound to it. Eh, it's okay. Probably needs a little bit of hemp and the reed needs to be played in a little bit. That's an awesome channer, but on the on the goose, I don't really like it that much. It's not that there's anything wrong with it, I just don't like the sound. <coughs> this channer was my very first long chanter. I picked it up from, uh, I don't know, I had to get my glasses out, but it's a uh, Delrin or plastic or polypenko. This is my very first big chanter. Now I used to drive a uh, a uh, handicap bus in California. So anyway, I had a long practice session during a, like a two or three hour lunch, and I was driving around, and I realized, oh crap, my chanter is on the hood of my my bus. I went out and I had lost the top. It had an awesome top with a brass fitting and uh, darn it. So anyway, I hemped up this mouthpiece from a, a, a bagpipe scholar goose. So it doesn't matter if I don't like the sound, I still like their stuff because it's it's affordable and I can make it sound fit my purpose. And eventually the foot got lost and I found a foot or a sole but it doesn't fit I might take it over to a machinist and just have them ruined out this sounds okay I like it but with Gibson Channel Reed it sounds really good <laughs> I like the sound of that one. Huh. Been a while. Okay. Now this is one of the Hakam Dim practice channers. This is Pakistani. Everybody claims they don't like Pakistani practice channers but that's okay they're cheap and they work this one actually wasn't that cheap it was uh, about 40 bucks and it has a nice really quiet mellow tone to it really low pitched kind of muffled sounding it's not very bright
practice with this one a lot because it's quieter than my other chanters. Now, I think I have two generations of Hackam Dim Blackwood chanters. Now the original one, original top for this one cracked right away. I don't know what happened or why, but I probably was overplaying it. But you can see the difference in the generations. This one's holes aren't chamfered or chamfered or however you want to pronounce it very well. And this is a black wood chanter, but it is really dark and really dense and it's pretty heavy. And the sole on it, well you can't see the color very well, is taking on a nice ivory color. And Hockam Dim, <clears throat> I bought all kinds of stuff from them. They were gracious enough to send me a free top with the chanter that I had just recently per uh, purchased. Now, they have really good customer service, and um, I'm not putting in a, a plug for them just for nothing. I'm putting in a plug because <clears throat> I had one of their miniature pipes, which uh, I call on my other videos their parlor pipes. <clears throat> Let's see how I'll hunch down here. My parlor pipes, and um, actually, they sent me two chanters for the parlor pipes, which didn't really work out because they don't match the pitch of the drones. Let's see, they, they didn't. They didn't match the pitch of the drones, so I had to get a, some mystery wood chanter for that. But these chanters, this one is actually. <laughs> You can feel the whole thing vibrating in your hand with it. This is a, I think it's an awesome made chanter. This top came with the other chanter, practice chanter, and that's my newest acquisition. I picked it up for a pretty good price. <clears throat> now this one's lower pitched, and I don't know why. Well, actually, they're slightly different length, lengths. This, uh, the higher, the older one is about a half inch, quarter inch, a half inch shorter, so it's higher pitched. And this one, they put some real work into this. Oh, look, let's see if I can get the. Uh, everything's opposite. See that? All of the finger holes are chamfered, chamfered, on there. Somebody spent some time on this, and everything fits perfectly. Both of the the old chanter and the new chanter, well, they're slightly different. This one's got a, a cup bowl on it, and this one's more rounded. Uh, let's see, da, 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 da. my backwards universe. So that's more rounded bowl. And this one's a little bit taller. It's still a bowl, but it's square, more square. It's just a generational thing, I guess. <clears throat> They're both Hakam Dim. But, uh, man, both of them play the practice channel on these things, and they just, you can feel it in your hands.
that's my collection of Pakistani practice chanters. A lot of people did bag on them a lot and say they're poor quality, and I've not had that experience. Now, I haven't had the finances to buy uh, a whole bunch of uh, standardized Scottish chanters. I would love to, but that's uh, that comes with time and not being too busy to, to practice all the time and justify this expense. But if you're just starting out, you can, there's nothing stopping you from doing exactly what I did. Because if you're serious about playing the bagpipes, if you're really serious about playing the bagpipes, then it doesn't matter what practice chanter you get. Because just to start out, you aren't going to be playing along with anybody else except for your pipe major or or your instructor or unless you're like me or the passion strong enough and you can go out take a chance you'll have to buy a whole bunch of reeds because the reeds are the most inconsistent thing about in practice channers and I'll go through I get a brand new practice channer and I go through it I have my box of reeds that well, let's see it's trying to find them right here And you go through each one, each one. There's all kinds of different ones. Some of them are really good. You can't tell them. They all sound different. Now see, this one sounds lower pitched in the chant in when you mouth blow it, but in the chanter it pitches up way high. <clears throat> These are the kind that style that uh, bagpipes galore mostly pr makes. They're really quacky and they're loud. They're good in a goose. And pretty consistent sound. My cats don't like that one. This one's kind of whistly. I don't know where it came from. Somebody said it was a fife or something like that. It sounds weird in the chanter. You get all kinds of different ones. The most consistent ones that I've come across <clears throat> are these white ones, and the plastic's different, and they actually grind. You can't see it because my can't. The resolution of my camera is not so great, but they actually shave or grind the edge of the blades to bring them into pitch. And I got a couple of border pipe reeds. I don't know what in the heck I'm going to do with those, but maybe I'll get some border pipes. Anyway, personally, in my opinion, it doesn't matter what kind of practice channel you start out with. If you've got the passion and you've got the ear for it, start out with whatever you can get your grubby paws on, because I still like my old channel. I like the way it sounds. If you like my video, it's just a well, I guess it's fairly long comparison of a whole bunch of different practice channers. It's a good way to get started. Uh, you don't need to bag, buy bagpipes, a set of bagpipes right off the start because you don't know how if you're willing to do the work. If the passion's there, you'll you'll enjoy it. Uh, it's a lot of work and it's totally worth it. Anyway, uh, my name is Ray and I've been bagpiping for about 10 years and I'm about mediocre as far as the pipes are concerned but I'm good at understanding how to 
to set the pipes up and I actually learned, taught myself how to set up my pipes before I knew how to play them so any of the technical stuff I pretty much got figured out I'm planning on uh, doing some other videos for some hacks on uh, cheating with uh, cane reeds and stuff like that so you can make them work when you can't make them work or if you think you got a junk cane reed there's a there's a trick to it um, anyway thanks for watching and if you like the video click like and make sure to leave comments if you have anything to say um, <laughs> try to be nice because nice is good and, and we're all good children so anyway thank you for watching the video and click like if you like it and click you click dislike if you don't like it and uh, I prefer positive comments but constructive comments are good too and which are positive in their own kind of way so anyway thank you and uh, there it is have a good night